Hey everyone, James back here. It's time for some more VGC 2015 battles from the Doubles Battle Spot Ladder. Today's team will be Heatran, Slowbro, Club Fairy, Lioness Fairy, Scrafty, and Raichu. We're going to find two battles and see how we do today. Our first opponent today, finally someone from Canada, 1548 rating, and that took like 20 minutes to find a battle. But we are seeing quite the interesting team. Swampert, Greninja, um, Talonflame, Jolteon, Sylveon, and Greninja. So the only possible Mega is the Swampert, so it will be a Mega Swampert we're facing, which is fine by me. Uh, this team looks really fast, and I mean really fast. And really frail at the same time too, so I'm gonna take advantage of that with my slow, very bulky Pokemon that can take hits really well. Mega Slowbro here will be fantastic in this game. Um, so Swampert will be the Mega. We got Jolteon, who usually carries the Life Orb item with Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice. Last move is usually a Filler and Protect. But this looks like a very hyper offensive team and I am fine with playing with this because I really like Slowbro and Raichu as the lead with Heatran and Scrafty in the back I think. I don't see much of a reason to bring Clefairy, there's Earthquake from the Swamper which is a spread move, Hyper Voice which is a spread move, Scizor does a lot of damage to Clefairy especially if it might be a choice band variant. So yeah, I think I want to go this. I mean, I could bring Landers, but I don't see Landers helping out that much in this game. Just because it's weak to the water type Pokemon. And doesn't appreciate Hyper Voices or Bullet Punches that well. So we'll see how this goes. I'm just going to try to get uh, Mega Soul Road to set up right away. And hopefully we'll be able to sweep this team. Raichu and Slowbro will lead against my opponents Scizor and Swampert. Which is fine by me. Kind of weird he led two physical attackers, unless this is a special Swampert, which I highly doubt. Uh, my opponent kind of lagging there, but anyway. First turn, I'm just going to set the Calm Mind, and I think I'm going to fake out the Scizor. Or should I fake out Swampert, because Swampert might go for Earthquake and Scizor goes for Protect. Let's see... But Earthquake shouldn't be doing much to Mega Slowbro, even if it's a Mega Swampert. And Scizor is more of an offensive pressure threat. And I do not want it to get, let's say, a Sword Stance up. So we're going to see Swampert Mega Evolve, which is going to gain the Swift Swim ability. Not going to matter unless he has a Rain Dance on this team. Highly doubtful unless his Jolteon's carrying it. But anyway, let's see. Did he go for the Earthquake Protect play? Did he just go for the Earthquake being reckless? Well, I no Pokemon protects. I do get this fake out off onto the Scizor. Scizor is going to flinch, and we are going to see the straight off Earthquake from the Swampert. Shouldn't it be doing much to Slowbro. It's going to bring Raichu down to its Focus Sash, but I don't mind that at all. As I am going to get this Calm Mind up, which is really good for me right now. Okay, so special tech and special defense race. That's absolutely great right now. And I'm not sure my opponent wants to keep going for Earthquakes because he's damaging his own Scizor. I don't know, I expect the Bullet Punch. Uh, let's see, what can my opponent do now? He could Bullet Punch the Raichu. Hmm. He can also Bug Bite the Slowbro and go for like a Rock Slide. I think my safest play is to go for another Calm Mind and switch out into my he Scrafty, not Heatran. Because Scrafty allows me to get the Intimidate pressure onto both his physical attackers, which is absolutely great in this situation. So Scrafty's going to come out and fire off the Intimidate onto the Scizor and the Swampert. Both going to be at minus one attack, and it's going to reduce the damage. We're just going to see the Bullet Punch onto the Raichu slot as predicted. Oh, that's a critical hit, and we're going to see the Waterfall into the Slowbro slot. Maybe hoping for a flinch? Really hoping it doesn't get it, but I do get another Calm Mind up, which is absolutely good now. Because now I can knock out the Scizor at the Scald range. Not sure if plus one would have done it, but plus two will pretty much guarantee it. As I'm going to slag off of my Slowbro. Oh no, that Choice Bandit Bullet Punch. Well, 
not Choice Bandit. We don't know that for sure, but I would assume it's Choice Bandit from that damage. I'm just going to fake out the Scizor again and just go for a Slack Off since it's my safest play. Scizor is not opting to protect. The Swamp is going to go for the Waterfall into the Scrappy Slash. Shouldn't knock out, but should be doing a good amount. Yes, as I do get the Slack Off, and that's really good just because now I'm back at full HP. And my slow rolls at plus two special attack, so it will be dominating right now. Now the question is, do I want to save Scrafty, or do I want to... Uh, well, I think I'm going to... A plus two Scald shouldn't kill Swampert. I'm going to Scald the Scissor slot, because... Scissor is probably the bigger threat. Hmm... Actually, I would assume Choice Band if it's not going for the protects. So I'm going to Skull the Swampert slot and... Do I want to sack off my Scraft? Well, Scrafty might be valuable. Uh, it depends on do I want to say Scrafty or not. Because Intimidate might help me later, but... I think I'm going to go for the Drain Punch onto the Scissor slot. Oh wow, it's not Choice Bandit, so... Okay, that's fine by me either way. Uh, Scrafty's going to get knocked out here, which I'm fine with because... Let's see what the scissor went first. The Bug Bite onto the Slow Bro, which shouldn't do much at minus one. Yeah. And I do get this plus two Scald. And I do get the Burn, which is really nice because that allows me to whittle down the Swampert even further. Uh, right now... I could send out Raichu. Or I could send out Heatran. I think I'd rather send out Heatran right now because I would like Raichu in case I do have to go for Fake Out in the late game. So Heatran's gonna come out, which is going to threaten the Scizor and the Swamper. Well,. A nerf power should knock out after one more burn's turn, so I'm going to slack off with my slowbro and go for the safe protect. Uh, just because I do not want to take damage with my Heatran right now. He's going to go for the Earthquake, which is going to hit his own Scizor, find my me, and it's burn, so it shouldn't be doing much. Yeah, look at Mega Slowbro taking that well. We're going to see another Bug Bite from the Scizor, which isn't going to KO, and I'm just going to heal back some HP with Slack Off, which is really an ideal turn. As I gain more health than I'm losing. And the Swampert now is in Earth Power range, guaranteed. The reason I went for that play is just, just to make sure that Earth Power can knock out, since uh, we don't know how bulky this Mega Swampert is, but it shouldn't be outspeeding Heatran. Nope, Earth Power going to connect with the Swampert, and this will pick up the knockout. Yes, it does. Scizor is going to stay in. Probably go for another Bug Bite, but it shouldn't be doing... I should heal back more than I'm taking. Yes, I'm going to get a Slack Off, and that's going to heal my uh, Mega Slowbro back to a really nice amount of HP. Yeah, that's a really good amount. So I wonder who's going to come out next. Probably Greninja if he has it. I mean, we could see Sylveon in retrospect. But, really, why would Sylveon come out against a Heatran? You need to threaten the Heatran right now. It's gonna be Greninja, okay. Right here, I'm just tempted to go for the Scald onto the Greninja. And... There are two places my opponent can go for. He can Dark Pulse, Bug Bite the Slowbro. Or he could... I don't know, low kick or hydro pump my Heatran, and... Hmm, either way... Then again, Dark Pulse shouldn't be KOing Slowbro at all, so that wouldn't help him. I think I'm gonna go for the Scald... Or do I wanna... No, I don't wanna go for Star Shock in case he turns into a Dark type. I'm gonna protect with Heatran, just to scout what this Greninja has. If it's a Water type move, if it's a... Uh, Fighting type move, it can carry low kick. Grass Knot. Not something I was expecting. Grass Knot gonna connect with Slowbro, but I am at plus one special defense. And we see the Bug Bite. Oh, this is gonna be bad. I know I would survive, but... 
Scald is going to connect with this Greninja, which is going to do a decent amount at plus two, even though it's resisted. I. Grass is not a move you usually see on Greninja, but I guess I'm fine with that. Right now, no matter who he targets, I'm. <sighs> He's probably going to target Heatran and. Bullet Punk. I mean, not Bullet Punk, Bug Bite. I can't stop that, so I might as well slack off in Heat Wave. And he's not a life orb, so he might not be able to kill. He has Dark Pulse. Don't get why you wouldn't go for that earlier, but he's going on to the Heat Translight. Going for flinches, does not get it. Heat Wave is going to connect and knock out the Scizor and the Greninja. Wow. Okay, critical hit on Scizor, that didn't matter. Did it knock out Greninja? Okay, it did. So that was the reason why I wanted to stay in with Heat Tran. Just go for the Heat Wave. I had nothing to lose that turn. I mean, if he had the Hydro Pump. I'm not sure it would have KO'd, to be honest. And I get a slack off, which was the safest play possible. I thought if Heatran could live, I would have won the game. As nothing on his team can really hit Heatran that hard unless Sylveon has HP ground. But it's going to be the Talonflame, and Talonflame should not be knocking out either of my Pokemon. So I think I had this game um, pretty much in the bag from the last turn. It just depended on... Um, yeah, because he would have went for the Dark Pulse or the Grass Knot onto my Slowbro, and then I would have been able to Heat Wave, knock out the Green Ninja and Scizor. So the results would have been the same, it would have just been Raichu and Heatran versus this Talonflame. And Talonflame still can't knock it out unless it has the, a natural gift. We are going to see just a straight Brave Bird, probably onto Slowbro, at least making this a 2-1 situation. That Brave Bird not going to knock out Slowbro. As I get the Heat Wave off, which is chip damage, but Mega Slowbro Scald will be finishing this game. So a really close one. Uh, we saw Dark Pulse and Grass Knot, so we would probably assume Ice Beam. Because Ice type moves are really great on Greninja and... I don't know, maybe the last one was Protect. It could have had a Water type move for all we know. But chose not to go for it, but I think Protect and Ice Beam might have been its last moveset. But either way, we were able to win that close. If he had the Scald... Well, not the Scald. If he had the Hydro Pump, which might not have KO, depending on... I don't know my uh, calculations for my new Heat Transfer against Greninja. Plus, you, if he had Low Kick, I would have definitely lost. Because Low Kick would have probably knocked out the Heat Tran easily. So, anyway, we're going to find a second battle and see how we do. Then again, if he had low kick, it was grass knot, so then again, I wouldn't expect low kick from a grass knot, so that made sense. Our second opponent of the day will be Joe from the United Kingdom, 1630 rating, and we are going to see Charizard, Heatran, Sylveon, Bisharp, Conkelder, and Gengar. Now, the, the thing is, on this team, I really so see no reason for Heatran on this team. Because it's just contradictory types because you have the fire type in Charizard, which is probably why it could be X because Charizard Y, Bisharp, Charizard X, Bisharp would make sense actually, so it could be X. But you have the steel type in Bisharp as well, so what's the point of having Heatran? Ground type coverage, I guess, but I don't know, Landers or something would be better. I don't know, that's just me. Of course, this does work anyway. Uh, we got the Sylveon, another heavy hitting Pokemon. We got the Bisharp, obviously. We got the Conkelder and Gengar. So we got two possible Megas in Charizard and Gengar. We actually technically have three if you wonder which Charizard this is, Y or X. And this is going to be a tough one because I'm not sure who to lead against this interesting duos. I think I want to open up. I know I want to bring Landers into this game. That's a fact. I might want to leave Landers slow, bro, actually. You know what? I'm going to try it. Landers and slow, bro. Not a lead I usually go with, but it might work. Raichu in the back, because fast fake out's nice. Scrafty doesn't serve well against the Conkelder and the Sylveon. Clefairy really doesn't help here. Yeah, we'll go with this. 
So I wonder who my opponent will lead with. Um, I doubt he wants to lead the fire type, so I would probably... I don't know what's the safe to assume. Landers and Slowbro will lead, though, against my opponents, Conkelder and Sylvia. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not the worst, though. I do get the Intimidate off onto the Conkelder, which is nice. It prevents any Ice Beams. And I'm not even sure if I actually want to set it with Slowbro here, because I think the best play for me to make is Psy Shock this Conkelder. And go for the U-Turn onto Conkelder as well. Uh, the reason for this play is because I want to free switch into my Heatran right now while also knocking out this Landorus. I really need this Conkelder out of the way, and Heatran actually does really well against my opponent's team. Well, let's see, a Bishop, Charizard, yeah. Well, if it's not Charizard, X with Earthquake. I'm gonna bring out Heatran because I'm expecting the Ice Punch onto the Landorus slot or the knockoff on this Slowbro slot, which won't do much in the first place. We're going to see the Hyper Voice, and let's see how much this does. That's not Choice Specs, because it would have done more to the um, Slowbro. And we are going to see the Ice Punch into the Heatran. No Freeze. <laughs> uh, game. But I do get the Side Shock off onto this Conkelder, which is really nice. Leftovers will heal me, but I am in a bit of trouble. I want to go for the slack off, and I'm going to have to hope I fall out this turn and go for the heat wave. Then again, that probably wasn't the best play, because I can have Heatran taking too much damage from this Conkelder, and even if I do unfall, there's, which I did anyway, so I guess that didn't matter. Hyper Voice, going to connect, that's going to do a lot. And let's see what this con counter went for. It's knockoff. I'll just slow bro. I'm fine. As I live. And get the slack off. So he's just abusing this factor of. Me being frozen. Which. I. I really wish I wasn't. But what can I do about it. You got the 10% chance to freeze with ice punch. And he got it. So another slack off. Because he's probably going to keep targeting down his slow as long as he turns frozen. And it's just remaining frozen anyway. So I guess there's no point of targeting a Pokemon that's useless. He might as well target down the other opposing Pokemon that poses a threat. We are going to see the Drain Punch into Heatran now. Which doesn't KO, but... This is really problematic. As Heatran's my main way to counter this team, and of course it got frozen. If only I could be hit by a Fire-type move right now. And I don't want to switch in Landers to take a Hyper Voice. But I think I'm forced to. I'm going to side shock the Conkelder, knock it out. going to bring out my Landers. I'm going to have to take a Hyper Voice and Drain Punch, probably. The Drain Punch I don't mind. Because Conkelder is now minus two, even if it went for the knockoff, double target into my Slowbro, I'll be able to live, but that freeze is really hurting me right now. We're going to see the Mock Punch into the Landis, which is even better because it does less damage. We're going to see the Hyper Voice, which won't KO Slowbro. Does a lot to Landis though, as I do get the Psy Shock off onto the Conkelder. But now everything on my team is weak to the Bishop. Critical hit didn't matter on the Conkelder. I'm guessing my opponent's last two Pokemon are Bisharp, and it's probably the... Uh, this is such a bad position. What can I do? I mean, the Sucker Punch onto Landers, the Hyper Voice, I cannot stop either. So I might as well accept my fate, and I'll switch out Landers into Heatran. Uh, yeah, I'll try this. So I don't lose Landorus. So I can rock. So he did, he did go for the Sucker Punch and the Hyper Voice play. I mean, there's no reason not to. The Hyper Voice, not gonna knock out my slow, but I'm not gonna knock out Heatran, obviously. As Leftovers is healing my Heatran, but that freeze. That's such a bummer. Especially since Heatran did really well against my opponent's team, and if I wasn't frozen, I probably would have protected Heatran, go for the Psy Shock, knock out the Conkelder, and then Heatran would have been able to do really well. 
Unless he didn't bring Charizard and brought what if he had a heat train counter in the back. Which I kind of doubt he did. Because what would you have? Your own heat train? I'm pretty sure I would outspeed that. And I have Landers as well. I'm gonna fake out Sylvia. <sighs> The obvious play here is to fake out the Bishard, but Sylveon's a threat too. I'm gonna fake out Sylveon and Heat Wave. Nope, he didn't protect Bishard. Oh well, I don't think it mattered because I would have probably been, um, I mean, what could have I done really? I mean, yeah, I could have faked out the Bishard, but then it would well, maybe I should have faked out Bishard. I'm gonna bring out Landers, but this game is over. I know that for a fact. There's no way I can come back from this, unfortunately. Uh, was thinking what I could have done better. I think I should have faked out that bit sharp. And if I did unfall there, um, I might have gotten the heat wave off, knocked out the bit sharp. Sylvia would have taken damage. I would have lost. Hmm. And what would he have in the back? I would probably assume Charizard would have been in the back. So I would have rock slided with Landorus. Yeah, I might have been okay, but to be honest, I don't think I would have fallen out either way. Uh, yeah, I'm going to forfeit here. There's no point of uh, staying around. Yeah, I might have been able to win if I did unfall. But it didn't seem likely, and... I probably should have switched out the Heatran just so it didn't take too much damage from that Conkelder. Focus on the Conkelder. And then Heatran would have had a much easier time. But then again, if Heatran was still frozen like it was there, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. So, unfortunate freeze because I think without the freeze, I would have had a really good chance of winning because it seemed like Conkelder was his best way to deal with the Heatran. He didn't have much else to hit for it on his team unless he had a. His own Heatran, which my Landris beats, and what else did he have? I don't think he had any water or other fighting types. Oh, he had Gengar, but Gengar doesn't really beat Heatran. It's like a 3-hit KO with Shadow Ball. So yeah, that's definitely unfortunate, but you know what? That's Pokemon. That's the game we play. And I'll accept that loss with no problem because I am vulnerable to hacks with this team. Then again, Freeze could happen in any team. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Unfortunate freeze, but uh, Mega Slowbro still proving to be a very strong Pokemon, able to dish out heavy damage as well as just a really strong defensive Pokemon. Anyway, follow me on my social media, check out my other videos, subscribe for more content, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.